Welcome back to my channel, Mend with Mare. All right, you all, as you can hear in my voice, I am on the struggle bus for sure. So I am filming from my childhood bed. As you can hear, there's chaos in the background. I don't know if you all are also dealing with this, but being back home and staying at my parents' house for the holidays is chaotic to say the least. It feels like negative 21 here. I walked out for two seconds yesterday, the wind hit my throat and I just, it's been really tough. However, even though this doesn't look professional, I, I saw somebody comment on the interview of Don Mayer on, on the podcast, Call Her Daddy. And someone said, oh, you gotta check that out. I would love to hear your thoughts on it. There's some covert narcissism going on there. <clears throat> and I wanted to sit down and watch this while I had some free time and free childcare. <laughs> so I started to watch it and I, and I was like, oh man, I think I need to record myself. I think that some people might want to see this. So I apologize for the lack of professionalism, the fact that I'm in a bed, but I wanted to go ahead and do this. I have some hesitation and some disclaimers. First of all, I don't want this to be taken as me picking apart John Mayer or, well, I probably shouldn't say that because I might, but oh, I don't want to become a person that's online that's perpetuating hate. I really want this to be about mending ourselves, but throughout my life and what I've learned through my clinical experience is that a lot of times covert narcissism is very hard to detect and it flies under the radar. I haven't gotten very far into this interview and I already have like a slight vibe of that. And look, I am all for all of us taking accountability and not being the victims of our circumstances. And sometimes we get into relationships that have red flags, we choose to ignore them or they're just not as apparent. So then there's a lot of beating up on ourselves afterward for not seeing it sooner and all of that. Two things, this is my attempt that if in any way I can help someone to pick up on these traits sooner, then that would be great. I also want to state that I'm not diagnosing him with narcissism. Another intention of this video is to seek out and see, hey, has he changed? Like this is the most recent interview. This was just a couple days ago. So if this is, if he has changed, I will give him that. And I would like to see that. So I want to give him a chance. I want to check these things out. Also, my attention behind it is because for none of us to be victims of our circumstances and to pick up on it because look, I am a fan of John Mayer's. I do think he's super talented. I saw him in concert with my friend back in like, I think 2005. I think that he's funny. He is a comedian. He is very charming. At the same time, that charm though is something that can be very deceiving and can kind of make you overlook other things that are a problem. So let's see, I don't know. I just started watching it. I had the feeling and I'm like, let me just record myself. So here we go. People are probably like, how did you get John Mayer to come on your show? There's only one way, which is to find me personally, <laughs> have dinner with me, be cool. And you're actually an incredible pitch woman for coming on the show. And I, I didn't really have an intention of coming on. We had a great dinner, Cassie, David, you and me, and I think there's something to do with December where you've all year been yourself, followed your rules, done what you normally do, don't do what you don't normally do. And I think somewhere in the last couple of weeks of each year, I go like, I want to do something out of character. Okay. So somewhat intentional behind it. Have you always been that confident? Like, what were you like in high school? Oh, that's, I've had a, some degree of confidence. Mm -hmm. Uh, it took that to get out of my town, to get into the world, to push against the forces of people who were saying, oh, not God. just not encouraging me, but actively discouraging me from doing what I ultimately have done. And so the quality of that confidence has changed from like a beat down every door, push yourself on people as much as you can all the time to something um, way more relaxed. Mm -hmm. So everyone when they first start out is way more confident than they, than they need to be because they don't know how confident they need to be right oh, interesting. and so it was kind of obnoxious when i was younger i mean if you're spending your whole youth pushing against these forces of you can't do it you're crazy you're gonna end up on the street this is a terrible idea 
that's gonna have a hangover effect on you for a long time where you're gonna still keep pushing. That's okay, he's being very honest and right now, he's being very honest that, and I do believe that in order to get out of your town and to, when you have a dream and you want something more for yourself, you do have to have some kind of confidence and be resistant to the hate because people are always going to knock you, you know, like people are always going to put you down for, there's always going to be those people out there that will knock you down for trying, which I think is horrible because it's like, when did it become uncool to just try, you know, whatever. Um, I, I feel like he's being transparent. I, 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 I think this is a good sign. Good sign so far. It's really yeah. interesting because I can imagine, like, I was, why I'm asking about high school is because I feel like we can agree that there's such formative years mm. where peer approval socially is so important towards the way that you view yourself. Yeah. How did you get along with people and how did people treat you? I didn't, and they didn't. I didn't have a presence. Mm. I went to school to get it over with and my life began at three o'clock in the afternoon when I came home and played guitar. So I didn't dislike anybody and I almost didn't even need that particular level of approval. I was kind of invisible and I just went to go. I didn't really pay attention in class. It, it's, it's really hard to explain. And there are people out there who I think would understand when you're 13 years old, you got five years before you can even do anything on your own. And those are, that was the hardest part of my entire life, was from 13 to getting out of high school. Because you already know what you know. And you have to go through the rest of what? this kind of rote plan that's been set for everyone. And I remember sitting in class going like, I'm not supposed to be you're, here. So you're Wait. saying you knew what you wanted to do. You knew you were going to be a musician. You're like, why am I in social studies? Like, what the fuck am I doing here? <laughs> Did people bully you? Like, were you the, like, dorky musician or no? I was bullied a little bit, but I was always kind of big. I was tall. Okay. I remember getting um, punched in the arm for flinching. I don't know if you've, if that's still a thing. This is the most butch your show has ever been. I'm talking to, <laughs> I love it. talking to you <laughs> the about Christmas special. Were okay? Did you date in high school? I had one girlfriend in high school, but I didn't really date. I had one girlfriend in high school. What were you like in like? Uh, what was John like in high school dating? Probably the best version I ever was of myself i would like to think that was the best version and the next time is the best version okay he's being honest okay okay he's being honest he's being honest sorry <laughs> but if in high school that was the best version of himself i feel as if <gasps> reese i feel as if high school was not the best version of myself and i'm just and for a lot of us because we're just figuring out who we are and I am a little, I got a lot of thoughts on that, you know, that if that was the best version of himself before he was, um, well, before I, I, I say all of my thoughts, I would like to listen some more, but that is really surprising that he's, that he's able to say that his, the best version of himself was in high school. Um, you know, there's so many people that get stuck in those high school years. They reminisce about that, like that was their high time. And he's not doing that. But when it comes to dating, he's saying that was his best self. He was a teen. Okay. Let's keep going. I only had one girlfriend before everything changed in my life. But to me, like, the truest, most innocent realist like sweetest it was high school did you ever through your fame wonder if you should reach back out i did re i did reach back out a few times because you were looking for what mm, uh, maybe to bring that part of my life into the new part of my life mm. but by that point she was married and had kids and i thought that's a separate chapter or or, or that thing in my life was a separate chapter I don't have to talk to people to know that I'm I'm okay, that we're okay. Yeah. I think that's telepathic. I liked you said that at dinner, um, just something about like, there's certain people in your life that you don't need to be in their yeah. life anymore, but it's really cool when you have a mutual understanding, whether it's an ex, whether it's someone that was your friend at some point, yep. to just be like, we don't need to talk to yep. know, like, we're good. We're all right. We don't talk anymore. Yep. I'm glad that he didn't keep reaching out to her 
She's married with children. So yes, John, even though it was a couple times, it sounds like I'm glad that he stopped. Whatever reason, but like, you yeah, back. I mean, there are a couple little outstanding, still vibrating things. Yeah. I would love to get to 100% closure. I don't think that's realistic in anyone's life. Do you have someone in your life that is always going to be incomplete? Yeah. I, I think everyone has a couple of those. But yeah. but for the most part, it's... I agree with that. Sometimes you don't know what to say and you don't know how to um, get closure. Some things you just don't get closure from. It's been important for me to move on for, into my adult years in my life with the peace of like, we're mm -hmm. cool, we don't have to talk. Um, okay, so we're, we're about to leave high school because I'm just kind of going through the journey of you. Yes. You performed at your high school graduation. Yes, I did. Were people nice to you then or no? Yeah, that was right around the time where I started to reveal myself as a guitar player and I, had put to, I was in a band and we'd written a couple songs. We'd written a song for graduation. I didn't actually graduate at that ceremony so I didn't get enough credits to graduate. I had to go to summer school. And so it was a very deep moment to play that song and walk off the field while the rest of my friends graduated and I walked home. Okay, but just so Man, everyone knows. How bluesy is that? Six years later. How bluesy is that? You're a Grammy this, winning artist. This part freaks me out. Chronologically speaking, this part is maybe one of the only aspects of my life that truly blows my mind. Why? Because it's such a short period of time that felt longer to me. Hmm. I was, I graduated in 1995, uh -huh. and six years later, I had, I was playing arenas. Mm -hmm. or, you know, at that point I was playing clubs, but I had a, an album out, and that would end up winning Grammys, and that was six, that was six years. So it didn't really fucking matter that you had to go to summer school. You're like, I, I didn't even need to no. graduate. And, and you know what I always think now is like, there are people who get branded misfit, loser, you know, um, um, you know, in some way sort of yeah. developmentally disabled. No, they're not. They, they're on some mm -hmm. other track that they have no school for, you know? I love that you're saying- I actually totally agree with that, 100%. I think that so many times we're trying to shove teens or people into a box and saying college four years is the box that you have to go into yeah it's really hard to get a job if you don't have that sure but there's so many of us that are are on a different um plane sometimes you know um and i'm speaking from you know having a child that is neuro and i'm speaking from the perspective of having a, a child that is neurodivergent and that does not fit into a box and it, it, trying to make him would be limiting him truly and even further from that since he is super young I, I just think that we don't open ourselves up to the options that there could be other places for people to go like it, for people that are more let's say artistic or think in a different way so I know that people have a lot of opinions about Elon Musk too but one thing that I do admire about him is that he does not care if you went to college or not. He he feels as if he doesn't he doesn't care. He will hire people that only have that didn't even graduate from high school, and he actually has a school himself that is he actually has a school that is just catered to whatever you're interested in. That if you don't want to take a math class and learn about geometry, you don't have to, or if you don't want to. If you really don't, if you're really bad at, at reading and writing, that's okay. Stay on the math track or vice versa. Let's say that you're horrible at math and you're really great in other creative ways and you lean into that. Um, I mean, this isn't a new, I just totally agree with, with John here that, you know, there's so many different parts of ourselves. Uh, there's so many different people that have a lot more that almost are more limited by following the track of college than leaning into what's actually meant for them. Or for all of us as a society to be a little bit more open to the different possibilities. And that if somebody doesn't go to college, they're not a failure. Maybe they actually know better because they know themselves. And I wish that we were a little bit more open to the different ways of thinking or different ways of being that could end up being 
right for the human, not just right for perceived as the right path because everybody else is doing it. But maybe and that the right too, path for it goes them back is to what you said of like I was sitting in that class and I knew I wasn't supposed to be there, but I had to be I'm there. Lyrics. It's interesting to hear you say like it's so crazy to me that six years mm -hmm. after I graduate college, I'm winning a Grammy for Your Body is a Wonderland. Yeah. You were dating someone at the time that you're writing this iconic song, which was... No, I wasn't. Dude, you weren't? No, that was about my first girlfriend. Wait, That was what? about the feeling, which I think was already sort of nostalgic. I was I... 21 when I wrote that song, and I was nostalgic for being 16. I thought it was about a different... No, that's, that's one of those things mm -hmm. where people just sort of form that idea it gets reinforced over the years no 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 i had never met a celebrity when i wrote that song wait and think. did your high school girlfriend know you wrote that about her that's a good question maybe maybe she didn't maybe she didn't to this day to this she? day maybe she didn't yeah so if you were my high my one and only high school girlfriend that was actually about you and this happens a lot with songs right so i've made a rule Ooh. i guess i always had a rule that I would never tell anyone. What's and I don't I don't write songs about people. I don't write them for people or about people. I might use a relationship that inspires me to write something. So yeah, even if I was writing a song because of someone, it's like that goes away and I'm left with hmm. the song. I don't like that. He's wanting to put the statement out there. I do not write songs about people or for people. I write them as inspiration from the relationship. It's, I guess, not exactly the same, but kind of the same. But skillfully making it sound. Sometimes there's this tactic of confusing people, like totally negating the what it could be about. He's totally negating the, the statement, but at the same time, he's fluffing it up to make it seem like it's not exactly what it, that it actually is the statement, if that makes sense. Not, I don't like telling anyone that a song is about somebody because most of the time it's not and it takes people away from themselves because they're just visualizing who I'm writing about. But the songs come out, they mean things to people. Sometimes people think it's about one person or other. Sometimes it hurts the song. Yeah. Sometimes the song doesn't do yeah, as yeah, well yeah, because yeah. people go, well, he's just petty. And I go, that's got nothing to do with that. Yeah. But I'd much rather keep the sanctity of these songs intact and have a couple of them kind of burn a couple of them because people think it's about one person and it's not. The sanctity of his songs. So the sanctity is, is the quality of something holy. And it seems as if he's looking at his, his songs as the most important thing to him, truly, more than a relationship, I think. And Jessica Simpson talked about this a lot in her book where he would intentionally cause problems because he felt as if he was a better songwriter when things when he was going through heartbreak in some ways so sometimes it was it was perceived as being emotionally masochistic of him so that he could produce these really great songs well and that goes to show that if we want to look at this from the perspective of covert narcissism you can tell that music is his number one. His songs are the most important thing because what do they bring him? They bring him fame, money, notoriety, um, validation, you know, all of these things, but it is his art. So I'm not, I'm not knocking that, but these are just like, these are the things why maybe it's the most important thing to him more so than relationships. And it's just, funny for him to say keeping the sanctity of the songs and it's like oh, well you didn't always think about the sanctity of someone's childhood when you made decisions to date them and base your songs about them anyways okay now I'm gonna say everybody's gonna be like I'm a hater but whatever because it's really important the most important thing in my life now is 
are my songs. Yep. And so my telepathic. See, oh my god, I swear I didn't watch this before. Um, yeah, they are his babies. They're the most important thing to him because it is his art. But I do think that he holds them above his own relationships and connection with people. And I'm and I, I'm not saying that that's good or bad, but it's just that's his number one. Um, that can that can be problematic, but okay. When I go play songs now, I'm playing songs that I see people in the crowd are reliving their life. It ain't about anyone but the people I'm singing to. It's now about their college years. It's about their sick family member who died. It's about their fight with cancer and how they beat it. It's sure that's what I do. I interpret these songs, and at the basis of it, it is. You know, I, I have a biased perspective because it's coming from the life that I've lived. However, he's he's he is saying that everybody else, you know, takes these songs on to become theirs. But I don't think he's being totally honest about the fact that, you know, he's he's not saying that they're about one person. He's saying he gathers them for inspiration from relationships. But it's like, but it was probably about a person because you're gathering it from a a relationship so he's not I just feel like there's like it's it's he's has a way with words and he's a little muddying it up these songs now for people are these waypoints in their lives it's not about any one person you know the first three three records of my life was just like proving proving and you should and then you start hearing people tell you uh, thank you your music got me through a dark time that's so much deeper I mean I definitely think everyone should have those prove it years and sure. enjoy them yeah because i definitely did but now do you see <laughs> now do you see and i had a lot of that i had a <laughs> lot that i had to get out yeah. when i first started and it was obnoxious to them and i get it and i think it explains a lot of younger people who have just hit the scene mm -hmm. who you're like this person is fucking obnoxious I have a lot of grace for it because I, you never know how hard someone had to punch to get out of their town yeah. or their family or a relate, you know, and, and you just, I think that's where people were like, I got the douchebag title a lot and I was trying incredibly hard, but I had been trying incredibly hard since I first played the guitar to get where I needed to get. I couldn't get the message like John. They like you just fine. You can calm down. They like you just fine. That's a good, that's good, good, good that he's acknowledging that. I'll, I give him that another point for, for John Mayer. Yeah. You know? I really appreciate you explaining it that way because I, I now too have a different opinion, especially maybe in the music industry or, you know, actors and actresses. Like the way that maybe people are being perceived online and the way they're acting probably is really not who they are it's they're trying to elevate to get the attention to get the approval that has so much to do that is so that has a lot to do with you're on your own kid and mastermind what alex is saying right now so i agree and eventually as you see people in their careers and this is you don't even have to be famous to have this. yep you can be doing it at your job. You can be doing it socially. Yep. You're trying to make a name for yourself. You're trying to have a presence. And it probably feels inauthentic, but you want to be seen. You want to be heard. You want to feel accepted. And that can lead to you feeling like, what? Am I even being myself right yes. now? So I respect that. That's, thank you. I mean, that's what everyone goes yeah. through. Everyone, by the time they grow up, have grace for other people on the way up as they fight through those mm -hmm. things. The people who are the most vicious are the people who have yet to ask for grace because they don't need it yet mm. because they still have this view of the world like they're in total control and they're going to make all the right decisions for the rest of their lives until they don't mm -hmm. and, and and i feel like that's just something everyone passes through what do you cherish the most about the rise of your career oh that's a great question the rise or where i am now i'll tell you the, i'll answer both okay. The rise is that it was during a really cool time. She said the rise, John. That's what she asked. I, it's interesting. He's like, the rise or where I am now. It's what he wants to actually talk about is where he is now. But, okay. 